I'm Mitch Marks. I'm going to be speaking about torque ripple and electric machines. Now, we all know that torque is the force that creates rotation. And if we look at the definition of torque, we have a force at a given displacement. And, and torque equals force times displacement. And we often think of torque as the single number. You know, when we go to purchase a car, we have 450 newton meters of torque are on the sticker. But this is the maximum torque available in a vehicle. When we actually go to use our car, we're using a wide range of torques. We're using low torques, we're using torques to start, we're using torques to change speed, but they're rarely that maximum torque. And as engineers, we need to understand all of those different torques. But typically, it's very convenient to look at torque as a static value, just one static torque. And the problem with this is that torque is rarely a static value, but it's really easy to use a static value to look at things like this is my 450 newton meters, or this is my efficiency, or this is my power output. So static values are very convenient, but the actual torque we're seeing has this frequency and amplitude around that DC average. And this torque, we really need to understand. So, so what is causing this torque ripple? So this torque ripple is caused by many things, one of which is the electrical excitation of the machine. If we look at a three-phase machine, these three-phase currents are dictating the torque, and the torque wants to follow the peak amplitude of those currents. So we're getting this torque ripple just by how the machine is being excited. And we're getting this amplitude and frequency in the torque. Torque ripples also being caused by the construction of the machine. And if we have a rotor, I have a quarter of a rotor here, with a permanent magnet inside it, this permanent magnet, just like magnets that might stick to our refrigerator, wants to stick to the stator of the machine. And the stator has these stator teeth. And every time this magnet goes by one of these teeth, it's gonna have this pulsation and torque. And if you've ever grabbed a permanent magnet motor, and you try to spin it, you can feel that magnet wanting to stick to each one of those stator teeth. So we have construction and we have excitation that are causing this torque ripple. Now why is torque ripple a problem? Why are we worried about it? Well one, this torque ripple is proportionate to speed. So the faster that we go, the more torque ripple we have. And if we start looking at the implications of torque ripple, we get problems with durability and fatigue in things like gearboxes. So if we have a gearbox, which has these gear teeth, and we, we have a gear that's experiencing torque ripple on its input, this gear is going to move back and forth, and we're gonna get this gear mesh. Gear mesh is not the only source of noise, noise and vibration from torque ripple. Torque ripple actually creates its own noise and vibration. And we find that at low speeds in vehicles, torque ripple is actually the predominant noise source in some, some machines. So that's also an issue. Torque ripple also affects the control of the motor. When we're controlling a motor, we need to know position and torque so that we can keep the machine spinning. And if that torque has a high frequency and a high amplitude, it becomes difficult to control. Fortunately, we have a wide variety of ways of reducing torque ripple through machine control, machine excitation, and construction. Now, in order for engineers to make these changes to reduce torque ripple, we need to measure and understand torque ripple. We have these challenges when we're trying to measure torque ripple because we need an extremely accurate measurement and a measurement with sufficient bandwidth. Now, let's look at the accuracy. So when we're measuring torque ripple, we're measuring it at torque. So if we're trying to go and measure this torque signal, and let's say we have a 500 newton meter torque sensor, and we have a plus or minus 0.25 newton meter ripple. We need a 0.05% torque sensor just to measure this. But if we're the control engineer trying to reduce this torque ripple, and let's say we wanna go down to a plus or minus 0.15%, 0.15 newton meter torque ripple, we have a differential of 0.1 newton meters. For this measurement, we need a 0.02% accurate sensor just to see it. So we need extremely accurate solutions. With bandwidth, 
We not only need to understand those peaks with our accuracy, but we need to know where they happen and how frequently they're happening. And for this, we need to be able to measure at a sufficient bandwidth to see these signals, understand their amplitude and their frequency content without filtering it out. HPK has a great solution for Torque Ripple with our E-Drive Power Analyzer and our T12 HP Torque Sensor. The T12 HP Torque Sensor has the accuracy to measure these very fine details coming in at a 0.02%, so you can really look at those small details and understand their changes. It also has 6 kilohertz of bandwidth, so you can look look and see the frequency and amplitude changes of these signals and understand where they're happening and what's causing them with that accuracy so that you can trust what you're measuring. Now the E-Drive and T12 combination has some real benefits. One, you can really simplify your test setup by having one solution for the measurements. You can bring the torque sensor into the E-Drive, you can bring noise and vibration measurements in, you can bring torque, speed, voltage, current in to really understand this one simple measurement chain. Secondly, the E-Drive Power Analyzer records data for voltage, current, torque, and speed continuously so that you can have all of the data for as long as you need to measure so you can do really advanced analysis. And you can use this data to figure out what's causing your torque ripple and then identify how to mitigate it. Lastly, the E-Drive system can record both the steady state torque, so that really slow average that we use for efficiency and power, but also the high bandwidth torque, so you can see your torque ripple. We call this dual torque. And the ability to have this simple measurement chain with data for analysis in both your slow speed and high speed torque can really accelerate your development time. Thank you for listening.